Welcome back to the ShiftCast. It's Hui Hu here. We have Michael and Jens alongside us. We're going to be taking you through everything that has happened and what is going to happen this upcoming weekend. We're going to be covering some recaps for all the regionals that happened this past weekend, as well as looking forward to Europe and glancing at these Rocket League Esports decals that are dropping um, let's See, Tuesday evening. Should be out now by the time that you see this video. Michael, how are you feeling today? Uh, you know, I, I love to say I was doing great, but I've decided that I'm going to use these introductions to talk about my men's league basketball team. After winning oh. the championship last year, we're now one and three, a little bit of a BDS feeling. Yeah. But we've lost our four, our three games by a combined eight points, and we won our one game by 42. So there's some issues going on within the team. Okay. Might need a roster change. Oh. But uh, yeah, tough loss to the last year's finalists. Um, and we're we're gonna have to get in the lab, um, but yeah. I'm otherwise uh, just happy to be here. Yes. What's with the glasses, man? Oh wow, well, these are my. Uh, fi I don't know if they're fake, but my Toronto Blue Jays provided pit vipers. Shout out to the Blue Jays. <laughs> Wish we got Shohei Otani. It is what it is. Uh, I've decided I'm gonna start wearing different glasses every episode. So keep you keep you know you keep watching. You're gonna keep seeing new glasses. I got a lot of them in the talk. Amazing. Um, and. I want to know, Jens, what's going on with this hoodie of yours because well, I've never seen that logo in my life. That's another esports organization from Copenhagen, Copenhagen Flames, but they went out of business last year, unfortunately. But we had them in Rocket League too. I mean, I got this for CSGO um, because Hooksy, I was a fan of him before he got onto G2, so OG. But um, <laughs> Fruity used to play for this team. I think Maestro as well, who basically kickstarted Turbo Puzzle's career by not you know, not pulling up to the to the world <laughs> championships. So, good job, man. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I like it. It's also the Dutch flag, more or less. Yeah, that's pretty Dutch. cool. I like the design on it, and it will never be reproduced. So you've got yeah, a, exactly. a one of one. Yeah, cool. it might mean yeah. a lot. In, yeah, it might be worth a lot in a yeah. while. Who knows? Well, I keep wearing it, so it's probably just worn out. <laughs> but... All right. Well, let's jump into um, NA. We'll just get right into the big stuff here. Uh, this past weekend, we'll jump into it, but the first thing that I have to, I just have to acknowledge it. Last week, Michael, you said Gen G clear, no contest. I, we just had to get into it. Oh, what man. happened? Well, what happened, man? You know, the beauty of having things that you say recorded is that <laughs> you have to learn how to be a grown up and accept when That's you're right. wrong. And while I will stand by my take that I think G Gen G will end up being the best team in North America. The whole clear best has has already been disproven. Um, it's a little shout muddy, out to, huh? yeah, I think it's there's definitely it's definitely at least a two horse race. I thought they looked great the whole weekend. I thought they had a, and I don't want to take anything away from G two. G two, yeah. the on the Sunday looked unbelievable. They had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning against Dig, who are a very good team, and after that, it was exactly what everybody hoped it would be. Um, but Gen G, I mean. Jack himself said it. They just had an off series. Um, that being said, there are there were times last year where Gen G would have off series and they'd still win because they were a, a considerable stretch ahead from uh, other teams. And I think that G2 proved that if you don't bring your A game against them, they will run you off the floor. Yep. I got to give all love. I think Beast Mode's officially snatched the crown as the best player in North America mm -hmm. until full, further notice. I think Atomic is back to being Atomic, the Atomic that won a major major MVP. And I think Daniel's really coming to his own as a support player and a playmaker. So, you know, I'm, I was wrong. I'll say it. I'm not afraid of saying it. You know, this isn't, I'm not Skip Bayless. It, I was wrong. <laughs> and I'm happy that I'm wrong because I enjoy sure. watching D2. I'm a fan. For sure, always yeah. been a fan. That, that I mean, team feels, it just feels like there's so much talent on that team. If they are firing on all cylinders, it's going to be a massive mountain to climb for whoever. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. think that's even true. I think it rings true for the European teams too. I know we haven't seen them yet. But if, if G2 is, if they're all clicking and they're all playing well and it's a cohesive performance from them, it's going to be tough for a KC. It's going to be tough for Vitality, BDS, whoever it ends up being. So yeah, that's diff it's just exciting. And, and you mentioned that two-horse race. So I want to throw this next question over to Yens. Um, obviously, everybody was predicting this beforehand, and now we've kind of seen it play out with Regional 1 with G2 and Gen G kind of being on top. Maybe G2 having a slight edge, at least this most recent event. Sure. Um, do you think that anyone else is contending to win Regionals? Sure, they might upset here and there, but it seems like G2 and Gen.G kind of have a pretty big gap between them and, and the they rest are, of the They are, but we've seen last season how those leads can vanish 
like yeah. we've seen Genji be on top for a little bit uh, at the start in the fall split, and then I mean people caught caught up to them. It took a little yeah. bit longer because they really were a, a long while ahead, but now it seems like it's a little bit closer already. So I don't see why they wouldn't be able to surpass a team like Genji or or G two. I mean, yeah, those two might be able to fight amongst themselves for the, the top places for a little bit longer, but yeah, it also depends on the bracket, of course. But there, there's teams like Dignitas who have proven to be good in the offseason. I, I predicted them last episode as well, and they've shown up as well. So they're just they're just a good team. They're not just yeah. running the offseason tournaments. And, and there's uh, Luminosity. I mean, yeah, they fell to G2, eventual winners, but nothing wrong with that team. I mean, they can yeah. definitely do do something there. I think there's lots of team. M80 maybe. Um, I don't know. I believe a little bit less in them, but they can still do something. For sure. Um, I wanted to shout out. I, I thought, I, I mean, maybe it's just nostalgia glasses, but man, it was so fun watching Justin this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really believe in that team. I think it comes down to Parth. I think Parth showed in the M80 series that when he's on, he is among the best players in the region. But then you saw the Gen G series where he was neutralized pretty heavily. Um, but I think Two Piece was unbelievable this weekend as a defensive player. I think Justin showed that he still has a ton in the tank. And I think, you know, no, obviously no disrespect to Squishy and Garrett. Uh, they are legends of this game and they've inspired pretty much every player in this field. But I think having another guy who can go and make a play mechan- at a high yeah. mechanical level has really opened up Justin's game where before teams would game plan to make sure he didn't create anything sure. because uh, the other two were less uh, talented in that or skilled in that in that level. I genuinely really, really believe in this team. I think they I think they have what it takes to be an elite team in this region. I said it last week and I'll stand by it. Yeah, they can do it too. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think you nailed it. Um, a lot of people are, are talking about that team and, and kind of their their win condition, I guess. It really does seem like it rides on Parth. The other two are are very talented, and, and Parth is as well. Uh, but it does seem like when all three are clicking and not just, you know, Justin and Two-Piece. They're special. They are, yeah. They're, and Parth had the goal of the weekend, man. That Absolutely. Unbelievable. That, you know, double tap, flip reset, that was freaking nice. It's going for it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so good, so good. Exciting stuff there between the top um, but we do want to, you know, unfortunately, we had to talk about OG and their struggles. I mean, we had a little bit of a hiccup there in the qualifiers. They dropped to lowers, and then they're on qualification match, and they are on their last life. Like, they are down 2-1 in the series, and they got about 30 seconds left to equalize just to take it to overtime to survive, not to secure the series, to survive. They were fixing to be eliminated from even top 16. Fortunately, I think experience... Um, you know, had their back there. Jane Apps, Com, and Nolly have all been in much more intense situations than what they were there in the quals. Granted, quals are are pretty nervy as they're well. Pretty rough, yeah. Yeah, they're scary. Uh, but they did. They 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 did what they needed to do. They took care of business. Stayed calm. Scored in the in the waning moments. Then closed out the series. But that was not the end of the woes. They come into the Swiss stage. They go zero and three, only winning one game. Okay, I'm not talking about one match. One game. They had a three one series against um, Gen G. And obviously, that's not a bad start. Like, Gen G's is a quality team, getting that win there. You wouldn't expect things to fall off so hard, but then they lost twice um, in the next two rounds, 0-3, not getting a single win there. And I think it was against, I'll have to look at in a moment, but I think it's Nick, Nick and Pirates, Pirates on a boat. Yeah. Okay, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the whole thing there. Those That's three top eight teams. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's the co so, team, right? All that's three right. They're, teams they're, are played against qualified for the That's right. Quality playoffs. teams, but... I think you still have to look at that. You combine that shaky qual and then a shaky Swiss, and you start to wonder because those are three players that <clears throat> obviously incredibly talented. If you're a professional, you're a baller. We all know that. But they were not the highlight of their team. Atomic was a highlight on G2. You know, I think Chronic at times, Abjack at times was the highlight on Nolly's team. And then Calm was teaming with Daniel and Beast Mode. And, and I mean, those are just two of the best players um, in NA and, and even the world. And so none of them were their... None of them were the all-star on their former roster. And so you just kind of have that question, like, what do we... We obviously have teamwork. And when they have teamwork, they, they look good. Um, they've got experience. You know, they, they have their head on their uh, head on their shoulders straight. But do they have that finishing firepower? Do they have that offensive prowess that all of their peers have? I don't know. What do you, what do you guys make of this, um, this start to the season for OG? Um, well, I thought it was really interesting. Probably the most telling thing about OG wasn't even on the pitch. 
Um, Dazrin did an interview with Arsenal that I watched a uh, two part interview with coach who's I cannot remember. I think it might have been Sathew and then Arsenal on his channel. And uh, Arsenal was speaking about how he was really confident going against OG because they play a quote unquote safe play style. Sure. And I think that says a lot in that it doesn't feel like there's an X factor on that team. And the three of them, two of them, Nolly and Calm, uh, were are specialized in bringing the best out of others. And Jay Naps is, you know, a a claim like he's maybe the greatest striker in Rocket League history, but he's not as much as he used to be in terms of a creator. Um, and so I think they're lacking. Like I, I would, I think all three of them have value on other teams um, as playing a role. I just don't know if the three roles that they fill make sense with each other. Um, and so while I do believe they're not going to go 0-3 out every single qual, I think they're going to be competitive. And I think their series against Gen G wasn't terrible. Um, and like you said, the two teams that they played did make bracket. But it feels like either a play style change uh, individually or team-wise or you know, uh, uh, maybe it just isn't meant to be. It reminds me of, um, do you remember when Liquid first came into Rocket League and they got Fruity, Speed, and Hookser? And it's like, these they were all back half of their careers. Um, and while they had the, the pedigree and, you sure. know, a, an acclaimed org obviously recognized that pedigree, they failed to be able to compete with some of the younger, more aggressive, more creative teams, and they were underwhelming. And I see a lot of parallels with this current OG team. Nah, I don't think they had as much of a chance as OG. OG can definitely still do it. I mean, no, well, they played no in expected. Europe. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> the competition yeah, might be different too, but I, I, Nolly tweeted, like, everyone can have an off day. Yeah. Uh, they, had a, they had an off day. It happens. Um, maybe they do really need to consider their playstyle, though, because yeah, Nolly can come into uh, Carmen Corp and help sure. them win flip and spin in the off season, right? So he can just do that. He's good enough for that. But yeah, maybe JNAPS needs to be the guy to score the goals, to be the striker again. Whatever it is, I don't know what they need to change, but the playstyle really needs to have another look. That's for sure. Sure. And I think it's just, I think maybe confusing is the word because you just, while, while there may not have been predictions for that team to dominate the region, there definitely was not any predictions of this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you look around and you see the sentiment from pros. Like I just watched a Q&A video from Jack and Rettles and, you know, this is prior to the regional unfolding when they recorded it, but I mean, they're discussing OG for a major spot. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like their peers have lost faith. So yeah, I think, you know, we're looking at it and it definitely is a struggle, but I, I, Right now, I, I am not. I have not lost faith. I don't think that is going to be a flop. That's too of a early. Team. I think they're, exactly. Agreed. I think they're going to be competing. Um, I think this first regional is probably just a little bit nervy for everybody, kind of getting their 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 feet settled. Could be a little bit of a play style adjustment that may, uh, may be needed for that team to regain and get to where they, uh, you know, get to where they sh can and should be. Maybe. Um, but yeah, OG, a little bit of a rough start to the season. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got some newcomers that have had. An incredible start. We're going to hit this up next report. We've got snowmen. We've got young whippersnappers. We've got pirates. Talk to me a little bit about um, this just huge influx of talent in North America. What, what, do, you guys, uh, what do you guys make of this? Well, we, we kind of, I mean, not we, but like the community kind of rebelled against the North American talent pool last year. There was a lot of calls of there's not enough new talent. Sure. And he's falling behind Europe. And I mean, and they did fall behind Europe. That's, you know, on that's objective. Um, but were we, I think, were we ever ahead? You know, well, I think we were neck and neck for a little bit there. Season <laughs> seven, yeah, eight, yeah. X, 21, yeah. 22. I hold on to that LA major top six. Like that's, I, I use that like the LeBron step back. Um, <laughs> but I think it was almost like they were, they, it was bound to happen. Usually bunches of talent, come in waves I, th I think back to europe two years ago where all of a sudden you had moist liquid seiko comes out of nowhere on endpoint sure, and it's sure. like whoa right and this isn't to that level yet but it's awesome to see frosty and scribbles sure. 
and reveal, like just come together and, and play with, you know, a, a level of joy. The young whippersnappers playing with level of joy, no expectations, just go out there and, and play the game. And I think five up and Eris, Eris obviously had some buzz before in the, during the off season, things didn't work out. Um, but five up and Eris were really impressive with pirates um, making the top eight. And both of them played very well. I thought Eris, I know he had a, a pretty bad whiff and hopefully it isn't just remembered for that. Cause I thought he played fantastic. Um, but even like who's, and I know we're doing next up, but even Evo who just like was, is essentially yeah. like a yep. fringe next up guy. Um, really establishing himself as like a star. I think it's really good for North America as a region to have these teams. So one, put pressure on the veterans to get in there, grind, really keep their spots. And two, it makes it exciting. It gives people new thing, people to root for. There are probably tons of people who are going to root for the snowman in the next one. And, the, you know, young whippersnappers in the next one. And that matters. It's important for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, yeah, the main yeah. parallel when you're talking about young talent is France. France has this industry of creating top-level rookies, right? And that's basically what you need. That's what NA needs. And it seems to get there a little bit, where you have those younger people coming in and finding other young people to play with. Because the older generation just isn't always looking to team uh, with those youngsters. And that's not just for ego or for trying to keep people out of there. It's it's very hard to be like 20, 21 years old and team up with someone who's 14, 15. That there is no connection there. There is yeah. no synergy. If you're a three on the team, you really need to click. So I get that. And then it's really good to, what you said, it, it comes in waves. And that's why I think it comes in waves because they need to bind down together and really make it to the top together. And that's what we're seeing on that right now. And, and it's great. It's really yeah. aw awesome to see. Yeah, we got we had that little bit of a, a, an extended off season. You know, it wasn't some crazy long time, but a little bit longer than normal. And I think that allowed some time for that, alongside with uh, what Michael was talking about—the narrative of you know NA is kind of gatekeepy or whatever. You know, I think it just kind of opened that door for new players to feel more confident and feel a little bit of validation. Maybe like, okay, yeah, maybe I maybe I should be up here. But I think the thing that I'm most excited about is because it typically. And obviously not always, there are exceptions, but typically we'll see a Nupo get plugged in with Ahmad Khaled. We'll see yeah, Zen like get Daniel plugged in Space with Space Station. We'll see Seiko right. get yeah. plugged in with Mets and Wave, right? We see that incredible talent and they get plugged in with two veterans, they learn and then they grow. This is totally new. All three on Snowman are rookies to RLCS. All three on Young Whippersnappers are rookies. And sure, they've competed, they've played against a lot of these players and ranked, but they've never been in RLCS. And that is the goal that everyone's achieving. So the fact that they were brand new, very young, Snow Snowman is like a three-week-old team, right? Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they have, you know, these kind of, I guess, <clears throat> barriers maybe, uh, certainly not like the ideal um, circumstances for your first competition. Yeah. Uh, and they're still going deep into the Swiss. I mean, Snowman took G2 to game five. You know, mm -hmm. we'll say there's some nerves there for G2 as they needed to, you know, kind of prove themselves. There's lots of expectations on that team. But just being able to be on that pitch and compete, I think, speaks volumes to the talent and ability of Snowman. And if there's a, you know, there's a segment there in Chalkcast where they were talking with Frosty, and he was mentioning that that team, those players truly believe that they have the ability to compete yeah. at majors. Like, they think that they can make it. And he said, and I, I think this is really important, he said, we understand that we don't have the experience yet. That self-awareness to realize, like, hey, I'm talented enough. We've got the mechs. We can keep up. We're not going to be outpaced and, and suffocated by, you know, just pure pressure. But there are some intangibles maybe that we don't have that just experience, that success, that failure. you got to go through it. You learn and you grow. So, I am I mean, if you are yeah. an NA fan and you are tired of being beat down by Europe, hold on to hope. you got some young guns coming in, all right? Yeah. The Up Next yeah. report for NA is stacked. Lots of fun talent. And that's not even all. I mean, we mentioned Five Up. We mentioned Eris. I think Evo's a good shout as well. I know he played last season. We got Kofor. We haven't even touched on him yet. Lots Beast. of upcoming talent in the North American region. I mean, very fun first event. G2 took care of business. GNG was right there. For the most part, fairly predictable. Um, excited I think to see what, that. what comes with those younger teams, though, is that they lack the con consistency. That's what we sure, might see sure. in the next That's couple right. of regionals, that they don't have the consistency to do it every time. Because people like Zen didn't start on Vitality. They were playing nice Cactus events with those other young kids who may, yeah. maybe not all made it to the top, but that's what we're seeing right now in NA. Those young teams, 
young players teaming together and some people really making it really far. So it's, it's great. Yeah, super exciting. Let's move on to South America. We've got a regional recap there. And South America, you know, I think the majority of the event, like the first 80% of it went fairly according to prediction. Everybody was looking at Sam and they had this, you know, storyline that we thought would play out and everything was going exactly according to storyline. And then we get to the finals. And we had a little bit of a hiccup there, a little bit of a scratch on the script. Um, complexity, 4-0 sweep Furia in the finals after Furia had just purely dominated the offseason. And then, I mean, had a, a very commanding series over uh, Complexity earlier in the event, did they not? Yeah. So the they beat them in Swiss, right? and then we turn around, and then something clicked when Complexity got to bracket. Um, Sam, talk to me. Well, you know. Ray's Bull gave them two years, two years to catch up. <laughs> he left, went on over, changed orgs, made a roster change, made another roster change, came back, and he's still the king. And, you, and I mean, not literally, that's obviously Card, but he gotcha. is the, you know, if, if, if Card's the king, he's the emperor, man, because he, <laughs> he has reigned terror on this region for years, on land, online. Um, and I think, you know, he said it afterward, he, he threw a little shade at Furia, who had looked unstoppable to that mm -hmm. moment. Um, and I personally think, listen, it didn't teach me anything about complexity. I knew complexity were good. I said in the last episode, I need to see them go on land, play a great team, and finish the series. So I, I already, like, I, there's really nothing that complexity can prove to me until they get to that point. So there's no reason to, for me to doubt them on a domestic level. But Furia looked unbelievable. Um, and it seems like there was maybe a jitter factor with them um, because compl it was very similar to the G2 Gen G thing where it just looked like one team sure. was so in command from opening kickoff. And um, uh, that last day, they played really well. Complexity played really well. I just think that this is the two-team race, um, similar to G2 and Gen G in North America. And what I like about this one is that the Gen G and G2 guys are all friends. I actually think these guys don't like each other very much, or at least they're very competitive against one another. I mean, it's probably not personal, but uh, yeah, I should clarify that. And so I'm excited for these two teams, hopefully to make land, play each other on land. I want to see some yelling. I want to see some popping off the chair, screaming at each other, and then all hugs afterward. But I think we have a really, really special rivalry brewing. And I think it's going to be the most fun rivalry to watch across this year in terms of the intensity of it. Yeah, apart from the finals being such a sweep in the direction of complexity, it is more or less what we expected out of the region when it comes to the top two being the top two and the rest of Sam being incredibly competitive, really creating some great matches to watch. Like, it's, it's great to tune into the South America uh, team broadcast. I'm, I'm so sad for Gamer Legion, the org just coming into yeah, the scene, yeah. and mm -hmm. then uh, Pan, the, the Chilean. Chilean player had to evacuate uh, because of wildfires, so they couldn't play their series. They had to forfeit, uh, which gave uh, Shaman Esports the, the spot. And they did really well in the Swiss stage, but I mean, it kind of they kind of showed that they didn't really belong in that playoffs bracket. Um, so I would have loved to see Gamer Legion take their spot there. But overall, great first regional event, Open Qualifier One. Sorry. Um, and love to see more out of Sam. It's really good to see. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think the... And, and, and Yen's pretty much covered it there, but do, do we feel as though any teams outside those top two can take a land spot? I'm going to go ahead and say no. Um, I think the like only way that this could happen is if the next two events, Complexity and Furia, end up on the same side of the bracket. Yeah. And even then, as long as even they don't then. meet until semifinal, I think they're probably still going to be the two teams. Um, you know, if they go, if they run into each other in quarterfinals for whatever reason, then uh, maybe you have, you know, one of them achieving so few points that someone else can sneak in there and grab it. But yeah, I mean, I think it's got to be Fury and Complexity. It's so hard to predict against them. Yeah. There's only two spots. There's two top teams. How can you not say that they're going to make it? Of course, there's other teams who <clears throat> can upset them. But it would be an upset. It is yeah. not guaranteed that anyone's going to take wins off of Complexity and Fury at the moment. I think uh, similar to what Yen said about NA, I think the teams will start to catch up later on. So I would sure. agree with Hoodie for this split. 
but I really like Crew, and I really think that oh, yeah. Crew has the talent to beat them, uh, both of those teams on their day. And I think as we get later into the year, it will be more of a three horse race uh, as opposed to the two horse race, just because of the nature of getting more tape on teams, getting more practice against teams. I think they have the ability to beat those teams. Um, so I'll say Crew maybe for the second, or not maybe. I, I would say that they're going to be firmly in contention for the second major, one of the two yeah. spots for Sam. But for now, it just feels like Furia have a talent level that is really, really hard to beat. Um, and complexity, the veteran sort of presence of all three of those guys being European, North American vets at this point, seeing everything they've seen traveling and going to lands, I think that's going to give teams fits. And I think NIP, I know they didn't have a great, I shouldn't say NIP, NIP. Uh, and they, should, they didn't have a great first run, but... I think Swift is going to get better throughout the season. I still really believe in him as a, as a top player. And uh, I think they'll make, they'll make, there's going to be a regional where they, they ruin someone's <laughs> racket chances. Uh, that's well, going to be. That's a great point well. to bring up as we transition to the up next report. So you mentioned Swift for NIP. We also have W7M a little bit underwhelming. They did go to round five in Swiss, but unfortunately couldn't make bracket. Uh, they lost to, let's see, who is HB? How do I say? Hero base, Hero base yeah. in round that's five. That's a, um, That's I mean, they're, but they're, they're only, you know, their, their, their losses here are against crew, uh, next and hero base. So, you know, a couple, a couple top eight teams there, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I mean, we're hoping to see a little bit more out of that team, uh, as the, uh, as the For season sure. unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. They were a little bit disappointed, disappointing, but they can still bring it back in, in the next, uh, open qualifiers. Like there, there's nothing stopping them from getting into the playoff bracket next time. Yeah, and just quickly, I think you got to look at W7M. I know they have a, a couple players that, you know, they're, they're still relatively really young. And so I look at them similar to like a team like Snowmen, where it's like it's going to take a while for them to figure find their consistency. But I don't think there's any team in, in Sam who's going to go into a series with them thinking it's free or thinking that they're not going to get a really tough matchup. Um, I think they've gained the respect of their opponents. And now it's just about working towards going from scary team to established team. So in Sam, majority of things went according to plan. Obviously, uh, complexity really popped off there at the end. But we had our top two that we thought, and they were top two. Let's go to another region that went fairly according to plan. Mina, we've got Falcons on top. TRK bringing the Twins in. Rawas and Kaliers. And very comfortable first event. Yeah. Both the top teams going 3-0 through the Swiss stage. That's what you would like to see. Uh, you know they can do it, so they should show up, and they did. And then them both reaching the finals. I mean, that's great to see. That's good content. Um, get great matches overall. I think the finals was a little bit, well, disappointing maybe from a viewer yeah. perspective. Yeah. Uh, Falcons really uh, had the upper hand there. Uh, and an infinity showing that they can really do yeah. something. They they almost uh, took uh, rule one down in in the semifinals. Yeah, I, I think Falcons have. I mean, there are whispers that Falcons were the clear one there. I know a lot of people just because of the literal trade that the two teams did, and the yeah. fact that they were so competitive against each other last year. Um, those like there are people that thought maybe it'd be a two horse race again. If you watch the series as of now, the Falcons are far and away the best team in Mina. Um, they are, I know I shouldn't probably say that anymore. Because You're going to jinx it. Back, back you did last, last time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, put your money on rule one, I guess. But I mean, TR, uh, TRK just yeah. has elevated the Twins to a new level. No disrespect to Mawson. Very good player. Yeah. But we're talking about the, a guy who was the best player on a major final team at one point in his career. I think he's benefiting from them. I think they're benefiting from him. They look really strong. They look like a team that can make some serious noise internationally. Um, yeah, I was super impressed. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think Infinity's on the same, is on that second tier. I think they proved it. Maybe they won't have the consistency, um, but they beat, I believe they beat uh, Twisted Minds. They yep, nearly yep. beat. Which we had as a one. top three team. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think I think it's Falcons. And then right here, you got those three teams and, and they're going to battle it out for that second spot depending on brackets, which is really fun because, you know, it's no fun when both both land spots are locked up. 
But it could be quite fun when it's three teams swapping in in the finals or that's semifinals. Right. Yeah, that's right. Finals. And, and, and just, it, uh, it was really fun to watch. Uh, shout out to the caster for Rule 1. I yes, was busting in was. Arabic and in English at the same time, all by himself. That incredible. Absolutely incredible. I mean, genuinely mind-blowing, actually. Uh, but just to give everybody an update, if you didn't keep up with it, Infinity took out Twisted Minds in the quarterfinals, uh, top eight there. And then they played Rule 1 in the semifinals, and they took them to seven. You know, Rule 1 Over had to work even. there. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you guys are right. They're, they're in that Tier 2 right there, battling for that second spot. But, man, TRK and the Twins is just different gravy, man. They, they, are, it's so they are incredible. It's a, it's a yeah. lot of fun to watch. Well, let's slide over to OCE then. Um, you know, oh, things no. have been going to, according to plan, and I think this mostly did as well. Uh, we have Pioneers and Power in the Grand Finals. And the only thing that I do want to note is I think there was a bit of disappointment with the Chiefs run. Oh, um, my God. You know, there was some hope that that Chiefs team may be, oh. uh, you know, a third contender. And unfortunately, you know, they, they just didn't, uh, didn't show it here in the first event. Yeah. Uh, I'll the I'm going to tell a quick, a quick little story time. Saturday okay. night, a friend of mine had just moved into a new place. He had a little housewarming, went over there, a couple beverages, came home. And I sit down, I'm like, damn, it's 1.30 in the morning. OC's on. Let me, let me, you know, I can't really sleep let right now, so let me. And so I'm watching, oh, Chiefs playing a, an unsigned team. Oh, super lucky. Let's go. And I'm watching, and they go up 3-2, and everything's looking swell. And then, man, I, I mean, you guys can go watch the uh, CJ clip of him watching the spectacular throw by <laughs> the Chiefs. Um, I couldn't believe myself. I thought I was hallucinating. He couldn't and that, You know, unfortunately, Miller Highlights don't make you hallucinate, so I learned quickly that I wasn't. But um, what? I mean, I've never seen any. I mean, I have seen something like that at the Spring Major last year with complexity. It was like that bad. Yeah. Um, I, I said oh. last week that OCE is a circus. It is incredibly entertaining and insane. Uh, and I think, you know, the Chiefs set out this weekend to prove me right. But um, listen, power, Torsos, man. He's going to be going to lands when I'm 97 years old. He just, he knows how to win in that, in that region. So, um, you know, all respect to them. And, and I'm excited to see the Chiefs regain. I think they're super talented. And also the other two teams continue to, to get towards that major spot. Do, do, yeah, you guys feel, do you guys feel like power is kind of a cut above? Because um, I'm looking at these score lines here. You got Kakos Minions and. Uh, Pioneers, they go to Game Seven in the semifinals, um, and 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 Power, I mean, completely destroys Gremlins four zero, beat Pioneers very comfortably four one, and then you've got Gremlins back here in quarterfinals going to Game Seven with Chiefs. So it feels like you know just just at one event, but it looks like Power's kind of got that that hold on the region. And then there might be another similar to Mina, another pack right here with Pioneers mm -hmm. surely on top of it, but a pack fighting for that second spot. Yeah, they got the upper hand right now. I think yeah. you could say that. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, there's other teams in those playoff brackets, like the Gremlins, a very wholesome ordeal with uh, Kobo's mom, I believe, in chat cheering, cheering him on. So it was gr good to see. But yeah, you you'd expect more out of Chiefs, and um, if they can keep up with uh, with the two finalists, right, Pioneers and Power, then it could be a real good fight. And in, in I just want to point out quickly, uh, last year in the fall split, I want to say. Um, it was either Pioneers or Power came top eight in their first regional and then bounced back, won the last two regionals yeah. and made land. So I, I wouldn't count that out for Chiefs. Just off the fact that I think they have the most mechanically skilled team between Gus, Hunter, and Lockie. Um, But the consistency of Power for years now uh, with their nucleus um, has just been really impressive. And I think, I think Banana Head is the best player in OCE. So... Well it's hard for me to bet against them, um, but other than that, yeah. And then we've gonna, we're going to move over to SSA, which has had all kinds of discussion about you know, players invading, <clears throat> playing from different regions, all, just lots of different discussion. But ultimately, Limitless still come out on top. They took down Young Money Clan, which is a European-based team, in the finals, and they did it commandingly, 4-0. And if you, I'll pull these score lines up, and we'll read them off in a second. It Smoke. wasn't close. I mean, they were pouring yeah. on four or five oh, goal right. games. So Limitless really has, uh, they've proven that they are the real deal. And if you are thinking that you're going to go over there and have an easy time, an easy walk to the major, it's not going to happen. They showed that they deserve that decal yeah. in the game. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they held home court, and that's all you can do. Um, 
I think, you know, I, I just saw the stats come out that there are actually more European teams registered for yeah. SSA now than in the last regional. So people s- clearly still see the rest of the region as kind of uh, free, you know, to put it, not to put it in a mean way. But uh, I think Limitless proved with that performance that, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are in your region. <clears throat> if you're playing them and you're on 180 ping, they're going to, you know, they're going to cook you. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, here, I got these score lines pulled up. It's 5 0 in game one, 4 2 in game two, 5 2 in game three, and then 3 1. So they, Gosh. you know, I mean, they're yeah. pouring it on. They've got the offensive pressure. And, you know, I think the only thing that we can say here, because just to, you know, expand on your, on your point where there are even more teams signing up now, hopefully Limitless, uh, you know, defending the region here, maybe that will inspire some of their peers for sure um, to continue grinding and, and, and working hard. And, and hopefully achieve what Limitless has achieved. And, um, yeah. I mean, they've got that spot now, guaranteed at Majors, guaranteed at Worlds. And I, I'm sure that it feels very good to, uh, you know, win Regional 1 and, and set yourself up to, you know, be in a good position to secure that spot for this, shout first, out to, uh, this first split. Uh, shout out to To Die For. I think he had a one four eight rating across the Oof. event. Just absolutely oh. ridiculous video game numbers from the kid. Yeah, that is. That is popping. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for the rest of the, the playoffs, it was just how the records played out. It was uh, two uh, South African teams ending up in one semifinal and two <laughs> European teams ending up in the other semifinal, one of them playing from South Africa. Uh, so we had a finals that was guaranteed to have at least one South African team and, and one uh, European team. So that's just how it goes sometimes. But uh, Limitless took care of business. That's all they can do. With these rules, it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. And there, like you said, there's more, play- there's more players and teams signed up. And uh, you know, hopefully, uh, we, we said this in, in in the first show. Whether you think that rules should go this way or not, or whatever else, you know, I'm I'm just cheering for Limitless to to do what they can to hold that spot and represent their region. Okay, well, let's go ahead and transition over to the APAC regional recap. We do have the one and only Kevin Bismillah Flick. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yes, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like how you introduced me. I, I of course. The Bismillah, the Bismillah Flick Pioneer. I like that. That's right. The one and Games only. Again. I don't think anyone else could have come up with a mechanic like that. But Kevin, let's um, I mean, let's just get an initial reaction here. How are you feeling after this first regional? Honestly, it felt good the day we won it. But then afterwards, it was kind of normal again. I'm not going to lie. Sure. We, just went, we just went back to doing our own thing. And Swings has school, so he's pretty popular amongst this group of now. Yeah. He's like a... He's like, him at school right now. He's like a hero right now at school. So. Oh, I bet. That's awesome. Well, well, well you for bring me, up pretty Sphinx, normal. And uh, he, he's a young one and a full blown rookie, right? So this is his first yeah. RLCS event, and you guys just go out and win it. Um, I guess talk yeah. to me a little bit about bringing Sphinx into the team, how you guys got together, um, and, and just you know integrating him into the team, and, and how that uh, panned out for this first RLCS regional. Yeah, well, at first, like everyone in APAC really thought he was really like everyone in APAC thought he was really good. So he was like kind of an upcoming, you know, up and comer. But my coach didn't really like he didn't really see it at first because sure. like we watched, we like analyzed his replays together. But like we analyzed his private twos replays, like private match replays, which was just him completely trolling. <laughs> so like my coach just didn't believe in me. But then after we after after a while, you know, we we watched one of his six man's games and he was pretty good. He had potential. He wasn't okay at first. He he wasn't like that great yet, but he we saw the potential. He he, he had potential. So we we kind of tried him out, and I think it was me me him and Misty first. We tried we tried out together, and it went really well. And then I'm not even joking. After that scrim, me and him like I, I asked him to confirm with me like like right after the scrim because it felt really good. So all we had to do was just look for a third, to be honest. And then we got the absolute goat of APAC, LCT, my absolute goat. And yeah, man, and the rest is history. We've been working really hard though. We've been working really hard every single day. So uh, to help build his play style and everything. So yeah, and it seems to Um, work out. Well, Kevin, I, I want to talk about the performance specifically against a team that everyone thought was going to run the region, which is the Gaming Gladiators. Um, 
yeah. you guys were, you know, there are people saying they wouldn't drop a game in regionals, and and, and obviously they did. They dropped the whole series. Uh, did you guys feel confident going into that game? How did you approach it? Did you approach it differently to other series? And, you know, after you beat them, and you, did it set in that, like, what, were you always like we could we can be the best team in APAC, or when it set in, you were like, wow, this is real now. We're we're actually we're actually top of this region. We have a real shot at making worlds, making major. Well, we didn't play them, so we didn't play them at all in the region. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I got it wrong. They, yeah, they lost. To, they lost. To, um, what, what is it? Um, That's Chapati brutal. Dream, yeah. They lost to Chapati Dream, so we didn't get a chance to play against them. But oh, honestly, man. we were. We were pretty comfortable playing against them, you know. We know we know how to play against them, and honestly, going into the tourney, everyone was pretty nervous. But like, by the looks of it, I think we're all tourney players. We all play really well during tourneys. We all communicate really well. So, I at first I, I had my doubts because it's Sphinx's first um his first regional. So, I thought he'd be like really uh what how can I say it really nervous. Yeah, so. But he was actually really confident for some reason. Then so, he got the yeah, ice think, and scored the overtime yeah, goal yeah. in the finals. All, all I had to do was just give him some confidence. I was just screaming at him the whole regional, just boosting his confidence. So it kind of worked. But yeah, we were pretty confident against them. And I think if we, we, were, if we were to go up against them, I think we, we, I think we could still beat them, to be honest. Well, I was just actually talking about a future uh, matchup that I've seen in a in a vision so it's all good you guys win 4-2 yeah just so you know yeah honestly we feel more comfortable playing against them than playing some other apac teams to be honest who do you think is your biggest rival then i mean at first it was we we really hated playing against um Bokitachi. they were really annoying to play against in scrims but in turn they were kind of they didn't they didn't really play the way they played in the scrims so i'm pretty happy about that because they're like all they do is bump in scrims so i was really happy they barely did any of that in tourney but aside from that we were pretty confident aside from bokitachi and you got to the finals against chapati dream that you beat 3-0 before in the swiss stage right oh yeah 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 um and then it goes to game seven overtime. Yeah. How was that yeah. finals? Honestly, like, aside from the last two games, I was pretty confident we were going to win. But then, like, as, as the series progressed, I was, like, getting even more nervous. Lou, like, um, LCT, he said, he said that, like, he's never been that nervous in his life. After the series, he was like, I, I was actually shaking. He said he couldn't even type on his PC, so it was pretty nerve-wracking. And then, um, what is it? It's, it was the last game, and then we were 2-1 up. Yeah, we were 2-1 up, and then I, I absolutely threw, bro. I double committed with my teammate, I think it was Sphinx, and I absolutely threw. I wasn't supposed to go for the ball. And then the net was completely open, and literally, the, the moment that happened, I was like, dude, if we lose this game, my career is over. <laughs> it's absolutely chopped for me. It's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. But thankfully, we iced it up, you know. The little bro scored the last goal as well, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, one, one last thing. I mean, obviously, with the region lock coming off, there's been an influx of teams moving around. Um, yeah. as, as the community of, like, APAC players, including the imports who actually live there, is there a sense of pride and just knocking them out of the tournaments and being like, you know, go back and compete in your own region because it's not free here. Yeah. I mean, we were pretty, like, we were all pretty stoked. All of APAC was pretty stoked when all the NA players that came to compete, like, absolutely flopped. Like, they, they, are, they got, I don't think any of them got top 16, if I'm not wrong. All of them yeah. flopped. So I was pretty happy about that. But, I mean, we're, I, we're pretty confident because they, they have to play on really bad ping. So, like, and APAC people are pretty used to playing on bad ping, so we know what counters bad ping, which is just shoot the ball at the net and they can't do anything because the delay is, like, absolutely insane. So we were pretty confident that we weren't going to lose to any of the import teams. I don't know about, like, 
the players who are like below top eight. But it's pretty rewarding knowing that the major region players who moved here still like struggled quite a lot. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, looking forward, I think it's pretty fair to say that um, <clears throat> there's some stiff competition amongst at least a few teams in the region. Um, you have the new upcoming player talent with Sphinx, obviously a fantastic first performance. But Kevin, do you think that this is something that's replicatable? Do you think that you guys can continue this on, especially if you end up facing it off against Gladiators in a future finals? Um, what, what is your, your confidence level as far as qualifying for Major moving forward in this first split? Oh, yeah. Well, we're pretty confident because Gladiators, they, they went out top four yeah. and we got first. So the, point, the, 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 the difference between the points is like quite a lot. They, we, all, I think all we have to do is just win one more regional and get second and then we basically make the major. Yeah. But I think, honestly, winning another regional is really possible with the, for our team. Like, even, even with that last series, I feel like we all played pretty bad in my opinion it like we were all i think we were all just really nervous because it was our first regional but i think we all played pretty bad so once we get once we sh shake the nerves off i think i think we'd be able to dominate this region to be honest Ooh. with you guys i'm not i'm not trying to sound egotistical but like <laughs> our team i like our it team, on, on a good day i think our team yeah. our team is definitely the best in the region you know and yeah, I mean, we've scrimmed, we've scrimmed gladiators quite a lot. So we're pretty familiar with the way they play. So I think we're pretty confident in the way we play in tourneys as well. I love that. I mean, you got to have that confidence if you want to be on top of region. And I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, provided you guys do make it, I'm looking forward to see you guys compete with international competition as well. Um, do we have any final questions for Kevin or we're going to let him loose? I, I want a yes or no answer. Will we be seeing Elevate at the World Championships? In yes, 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 yes. That's Absolutely. what I like to see. That's Come what on, I like bro. to see. Stop playing, bro. If they have a Gamers 8, we're pulling up as well, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. I love the Gamers 8. And I think, I think awesome. we're going to do good in Gamers 8 as well. Because, I mean, Sphinx is a ones player. So he's going to absolutely clap. Absolutely clap, I feel like, at Gamers 8. And I think all I'm going to do is play threes because my two teammates are pretty good at twos as well. So hopefully yeah, we had, they have a gamer's eight. So, yeah. We had uh, Sphinx in the 50 uh, next up players from Shift. Not in the top 10 yet, but... Uh, going to change soon, yeah. it seems like. What do you think his potential... What, what do you think his potential is? Um, well, judging by, like, his progression rate right now, like, I think he could honestly, like compete in a major region like i'm de i definitely think he's the best in the region right now and like he's literally my my backpacker i just sit back and watch him play the game so i think honestly if you give him like a lot a bit more time he could probably compete in a different region if you really wanted to like give him like a year or two and i think he could probably do that because he's, he's really good and he's really smart he's got really good instincts so yeah you know, he, his his limits are like absolutely, like it's, there's nowhere to be seen, bro. The limit of this little bro, man. I'm not gonna lie. My Great to have bro. him on your team, then. That's right. Yeah. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you spending some time with us. We'll go ahead and open the floor here. If you ha have any uh, shout outs you'd like to give or or plugs, where can we find you? Do any streaming or anything like that? I do stream, but very inconsistently. At twitch.cv slash oh kevin97 bro. Remember that, remember that. And yeah, man, shout out to my teammates, absolute goats, bro. I'm really happy we won the regional. And shout out to Trill, absolutely cracked coach. coach. No. Oh my goodness, bro. Absolutely cracked. I'm not gonna lie. He's actually the smartest person in the Rocket League scene. I'm not even joking. And yeah, shout out to Justin, uh, the owner of Elevate. You know, he's been taking care of us, he's been taking really good care of us and keeping us updated on everything. So yeah, man, shout out to those guys. Incredible. Kevin, right. thank you for taking some time to uh, talk with us and best of luck with the remainder of the season. Thank Good you, luck. thank you. All right, well, let's move forward into a segment that we're gonna have here called Double Down. And what we wanna do is we wanna make a bold prediction 
for open qualifier number two. So obviously we could talk about any of these regions that have unfolded already in a uh, Sam. Well, everybody except Europe. We'll just keep it like that. So who wants to kick us off? You got a anybody got a hot take? I know, you know, poor Michael. He already already I'm had for a fly one. From so let me one. let me get some redemption. Let me get some redemption. <laughs> Okay. To do it. Um, this might actually be a hotter take than the last one, but okay. my hot take is that I believe that the Shopify Rebellion are going top two next regional. Ooh. I think that they made crazy progress this offseason, adding yeah. one of the best players to ever touch the game. I think they already showed that on their day, they can beat incredibly talented teams like M80, like Dignitas. They beat two of probably the five best teams in the region last uh, regional. And so for me, I think this is the time. I think one of the, the big two is going to drop a series um, in Swiss and then end up on the same side of the bracket. I think Shopify will get a little help there, but I don't see any team that is outwardly better than them at this point. And I think that they make a run to the final. Uh, I don't know if they're going to win. I'm not willing to go that far, but I think that I believe in the Rebels. And I think that they're going to show, continue to show why my belief in them is justified hashtag arm the rebels arm the rebels i love <laughs> shopify e-commerce is so awesome it, i love it changed my life yeah well i don't have a, a, an a take i don't know i, I think uh, i want to focus on another region um i think it is time for king card to get back in business Ooh. and maybe get his crown. I don't know if he's going to win, but I think if anyone can challenge uh, Furia and Complexity at the moment, it is Crew Esports. They have a decal now, so they should be flying. <laughs> so we think minimum, minimum I mean, they, top they four? That... Yeah, yeah. I think minimum top four, that would be my hot take. Um, reaching the finals probably would be something they need a little bit of help from the bracket with a yeah. little bit of luck going their way. But yeah, when would, when don't you need a little bit of luck? So I think they can get quite far. Yeah. I'm going to give my take, but I want to ask you guys and pose a, a, a take towards you guys, I guess. Do you think that Limitless and Elevate can repeat? Yes. Limitless yeah, for both? sure. I think... I think I think limitless for sure. I think elevate. Um, I would give yeah. them a more than fifty percent chance, just Dang. because I actually do think Spanx is just like, yeah, like low key. He might be clear of the rest okay. of the region. Okay, they got right. those chances out of the way, like Kevin said. So yeah, exactly. I mean, Kevin was definitely confident. He yeah. he's gassing up the teammate. He's saying this is he's comfortable in the backpack. So he's he's got faith in in uh, Sphinx. Of as course, well. gaming gladiators want to take it back, but I oh, can yeah. see Elevate doing it again. Yep. I so. think they have the tr one true game breaker in the region. I don't think there's gotcha. any other game breakers. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's why I got them. All right. Well, I'm gonna throw mine out there, and I am a huge advocate for. I've always been a fan of storylines. I love upcoming new talent. I love fresh faces, people getting their chance. And so for me, it's been really fun to see this new crop of NA talent. And so my take is that Young Whippersnappers and Snowmen, the two full rookie rosters, they went to round five in Swiss, so they're contending for top eight. And I don't think that's a fluke at all. I think both of those teams are going to be back in the regional. I think both of them will be, again, contending for that top eight spot. Um, I think bare minimum, we're going to see Swiss round five from both of them finishing ninth through 11th. Um, so that's my hot take. Um, and I know Yen said it earlier, and he's exactly right. The only question mark is consistency, right? We've seen they right. have plenty of ability. We know that they can uh, compete with some of the top talent in the region, but can they do it consistently is the question. So I'm going to go ahead and make the, the, the claim that I think they can, and I think they will. But the consistency would be doing it in all three regionals. So I want to ask you, can sure. they repeat it? Dude, well, I think I like they're here. That. I think I they're like here that. for the season. Minimum, well, and here, minimum let me, Swiss five. Let me explain, let me explain why, too. Because you look around at who missed the regional. You've got Omelette, and that's a tough miss. And yep. then... Leftovers is kind of the I mean, Leftovers one. is a good team. There are, I mean, um, incorrect. That's a good team. There are good teams. How could you forget but about I think... Turbo's Cheeks? <laughs> well, Can't forget about the Cheeks, man. Five, five, but I look around, I look around at who's four. missed. Yeah. And I'm sorry for interrupting there. So I look around at who's missed, and I looked around at the people that are underneath, like a plot twist, deleted. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I've got faith. I think... Snowmen and whippersnappers. Yeah. They they just 
I like I it. Michael said it earlier. They're playing with this just like joy. It just feels very carefree. Let's have fun. Here we are. That's and cool. they're rocking and rolling. So I do, I, I have faith. I think that they will be a good, consistent contender for top eight, top 10 um, in North America all season. And I would love to be um, like short selling them. I would really be excited if they could, you know, pump in there to the top, top six, maybe a top four once or twice. I think that'd be super cool for just NA fandom in general. Mm-hmm. <laughs> NA fandom's been holding some L's for the past, past couple of years. So, we had a good know, weekend. To, that was I'm the most fun I've had watching. Most fun I've had watching an NA regional in forever. Like I was like, wow, look at like we got young talent, we have elite yeah. talent, we have like second tier teams. It's been a while <laughs> since at least it wasn't either like, oh, first killer wins another regional, oh, right. Genji wins another regional, or everyone sucks. So it's been nice to to yeah. it was an awesome experience. I loved it. Yeah, some fun orcs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So there's our double down segment. You guys have to hold us accountable. We will revisit these takes after next qualifier occurs and we will see who eats their words or who is a genius with that being said we do want to preview europe obviously europe's on an island by itself in a different weekend and i mean they deserve it who's not excited for europe we've got the returning world champions vitality we've got the brand new super team kc we've got the brand new big time or gentle mates french powerhouse as well and I mean, it, like you said earlier, Jens, it's just an unending wave of talent from that uh, from France. So they keep doing. We it. got oxygen. No bias here. I'm excited. <laughs> Look, they they brought Oski to the roster, and I mean, the big man. Who's who's going to doubt Oscar? I mean, he's had he's been incredibly consistent since uh, they even were eligible to play. We've got um, who am I missing? Moist, Oli, and Rezzy. Jumping in there with Joyo, I think that's going to be a very fun team to watch. All incredibly talented mechanically. And BDS, how could I forget? Drolly up next. So Europe, and, and, and that's just your, you know, that's predicted the top. top teams. There's, there's plenty still, of teams that are still, still talented. So that much, could, yeah. That's right. There's, there's so much talent in that region. So very excited for Europe. Who is the favorite for EU1? Who do you guys think it's going to be? It, let me ask this. Before you answer, is it between KC Vitality? Do you guys have it as yeah. those two? Is your yeah okay? I feel like that's yeah, a fair take though be. across the board. I mean, it has to be until until proven otherwise. Why not? Yeah, the I uh, fans will say that because they won flip and spin, so Vitality isn't on that win streak anymore. Sure, sure. They're the clear favorites. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I think they're. I don't know if Team Vitality are the clear favorites, but I do still think they are the favorites. Yeah. Fair. Absolutely fair. Um, I think I'm, I'm in a similar boat. My thing is, like, my, my bo- everything I, I can think of is telling me Carmen Corp is the best team in the, in the region. Yeah. They have the second best player in the region. Um, they have Rise, who is probably the best sort of fill-the-gaps guy. He's incredibly... Uh, Aggressive. He just he makes every team he's on better, and uh, you know you have a Tao who is so gifted as a playmaker. But I really I I cannot bet against Vitality. I need to see them lose in RLCS Wait, so before you can't I can bet against them, them. But they are the they are not the I, favorites. I, no, <laughs> I I'm gonna still say they're the favorites, but like. I like I, I want to say Carmen is, but it's like if right. if I roll a dice four times, yeah. five times, and it comes up three every time, I'm gonna predict the next time is a three. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a certain amount of consistency that they've had. They've won at the highest level. They've won at every level. Um, I'm not gonna really put a random land in the middle of the off season, probably when they weren't playing the game as much because they just won the major and the world championship on the same level as you know preparing for an LCS season. So I will happily hop on the Carmine Court wave as soon as they actually beat Vitality. But until Vitality lose an event, I can't sit here and say they're not the favorites because they haven't lost. It's just like, yeah. it's simple as that. It feels like I'm betting against fate at that point. Well, I do not agree. I am going to have to go KC and let me explain why. Number one, Coach Farah, the legend. Coach. One of the most influential coaching moments in the esports history. I truly feel like that brought a lot of validity to coaching. And whether you think that's corny or silly or not, it doesn't matter. People pay attention now because of that move. 
And mm -hmm. so I, I do, and I think there are other plenty of other coaches that are influential as well and, and you know helpful for their team. But I got to give a shout to Farah. I love that. I think that was super fun. What a great moment for the eSport. Um, but here's the thing, all right? We have seen historically, and granted, this is a shorter time uh, window that this team has existed, but we have seen historically when a team opts to stick and everyone around them is willing to make moves, more times than not, it doesn't work out for that team that sticks, right? It's true. Uh, you don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. No, I, you're right. But here, I want to say something after this. Okay. Go on, go on. Okay, so more times than not, it doesn't work out. And I actually don't think it's anything to do with that team not being as good as they were or anything like that. But I do think that these young kids, when you put them in a new environment, something they're excited about, Ato is leaving an environment where they were on the cusp for so long. They were competitive, but they just couldn't get over that hump, whether it was BDS or KC or Vitality. They just couldn't rise to that occasion. So you know Ato is hungry. Very, very, one of, I mean, one of the most talented players mechanically in the region. I mean, such a, he, he, he and Atomic remind me of each other. It feels, I've always said this, if you have ever been on a Smurf account where you're playing at a rank way lower than yours, I feel like that's how they play pro Rocket League. They're just so <laughs> unpredictable. They're so yeah. insane. They're just like off the wall, and you're like, what is he doing over there? But it works. And I think when you pair a toe and that unpredictability with the other two, Rise, incredibly consistent, a winner's mentality, doesn't matter where you plug him in. And then you have Vatira, who is one of the most solid, like anchor style players. Obviously, he's influential on both ends of the pitch, but he is just locked down, and you have to work very hard to get past him. And then you have an environment like Carmine Corp, and you have Farah. I mean, that is the perfect concoction to take down a powerhouse like Vitality. And I think they can do it. I mean, those are hungry winners. Those, uh, you know, Batira is very vocal. Rai is very vocal. I think if there's a team that's going to do it, that's a team that can. Yeah, absolutely. They can. But I don't think Team Vitality is at a disadvantage just because they didn't make a roster move, just because they're not a fresh team that come in hungry. I think what we've seen in a lot of seasons before is that teams have stuck together after they've won a championship or after they've been on a really good run, and they were basically past their prime. They are over that hump, over that hill, and they're just declining in quality. And if you then stick, then that can be an issue. Then you can actually fall off a little bit. But that's not the case here. Team Vitality only just came in last year mm -hmm. and are just winning. So why would they make a roster? Yeah, if people say Verdosin, you can swap them out for another player, but he's been he's really shown up at World Championships. He's really shown that he can be that third man for this mm -hmm. team. He's doing it amazingly. Why would they swap him out? What we've seen with other teams is that they're past their prime. And if they if you then stick together, if you've build up to that win, to that world championship win, and then you, it's on the decline. Yeah, that happens. Maybe it's better to make a change, but that's not the case here. They're not past their prime yet. They can still go on winning. So yes, Skarming Corp can take them down, but I don't see anything standing in the way of Team Vitality keeping on their winning ways. I certainly understand why they didn't make a change. I think it's very hard to justify one. Um, and, and the community made that very clear as well, that they would not be on board with uh, any of those players being removed. So I'm not saying that they should have, but what mm. I'm saying is we look at it and it doesn't always work out that way. I mean, are you implying that last year's BDS world champion was past their prime with Monkey yeah. and Seiko? Yes. 100%. And then they come back to the Extra world championship mostly. and they're in the finals again. I don't see how that would be past their prime. Um, it, it just happens. This kind of stuff happens. And it, it could just, it could even be like a psychological thing where yeah. not when Zen comes in players, and they have all this team, momentum right? and they're so excited to play. And they're rocking and rolling, and now there's something a little different. They have achieved the thing that they were chasing. Now, I'm not saying that they won't keep chasing it, but I do think that there is a difference in mentality when you have achieved the thing prior, uh, uh, like after you've achieved the thing versus before you've achieved the thing. And I'm not saying that it will, but I have a feeling that that is very possible. I like this Casey roster. I feel like it's a perfect storm, and I, I, I don't disagree with you guys. I think, like what Michael said, if it just happens and happens and happens and happens, how do you bet against it, right? Maybe mine is the outlandish take, but that's how I feel. I think this is a, you know, it's a recipe that I will say I would, uh, I would not be surprised to see KC be that number one team. One, one last thing. Sure. Uh, I think my belief in vitality has, and I, why I think it would differ from other world championship teams that struggled after is because they have Zen. 
I am. That's a fair. I point. am so <laughs> believed just that a, there. It's like the freaking beast. major man. Yeah, it's like Justin. Yeah, yeah. like Kenobi levels of. I think he's that far ahead of the rest of the field. Mm-hmm. And I think if there was, Even if it so. was literally Vatira, who is clear second best in the world, Vatira yeah. Alpha and Radosin versus Zen Rise and Natal. I would agree with you where it's like the new super team. There's no tape on them, whatever, right. whatever. I genuinely just feel like but, I don't think there's ever, ever there hasn't been a Zen since Justin yeah. first came in and lit the world on fire. Um, and so for that reason, that's like the main reason I would say Zen that I, I, I'm thinking. it's just, he's, he is so far and ahead to be at least the best player in the world on a consistent basis. There's other players that reach his level and above, but yeah. I've, I've, I don't think we've ever seen a player be this good for this long and basically never miss a beat. Yeah. Since Justin, I don't know, more like since Monkey Moon, but I, I get you. Well, he wasn't a prodigy prodigy. He <laughs> was think, like 18, I think, is, is what I I think meant. those are all great I parallels, guess. but I think Zen is like a different level of yeah. ahead. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Justin was ahead, Kronobi was ahead, Monkey Moon was ahead, but Zen's ahead is like, and he's not ahead confident. in a lot tougher of an era where it feels like yeah. the skill ceiling yeah. it's not it's not being reached but it's it's hit a it's moving ahead much margin much more marginally than it was before say joyo yeah. or yeah. before monkey mm-hmm. I know this. Either way, it is going to be a fun fight. And those are not the only two teams in the fight. You know, we've given them a lot of praise and they deserve that praise, but we've got some other solid teams. We got Gentle Mates, BDS, Moist, we have Oxygen. Do you think um, any of those other teams can win regionals? You think they can knock any of the uh, either of those top two off? Or are they just going to be uh, trying to grab those next two spots for international events? I I want to say it's going to get real wet. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Moist esports, baby. Listen, I don't know why we're pretending this team isn't incredible. They have Joyo, who is unquestionably, Imagine. I will not stand for anything other than a, a top 10 player in the world. He, I, he was my most improved player last year. I know that people say Radosin, there's other players. To me, jo- Joyo went from that Yan AJ cloth of nuclear offensive weapon that needs a lot to work with him. I thought he progressed throughout the season into a full-blown superstar. Sure. Um, I think... We t- I mean, we'll talk about Rezzy a little bit more later, but Rezzy was arguably the best player on a team that made a top three run in Europe uh, it, during what it most considered the toughest online split in any region ever. And he was, the, you know, one of the driving forces behind that. And Oli's a regional winner who just had a kind of a bad bounce late, late in the season. I think they fit perfectly. I think Joyo brings a factor very similar to Beast Mode where he can show up on any day and just embarrass any team in the world. And I think I think when teams go lo- log into that lobby against Moist, even the best teams, there's something in the back of their mind like we might get whooped. Like they might just peek on us and we might get whooped. And I think that that factor puts them over a team that's a little more solid, like BDS or Gentlemates. I think Oxygen has that little bit with Oski as well. Wait, but you think Moist is Joyo's better than own. BDS and Gentlemates? Yes, unquestionably. I, I see Ooh, them as a that I confidence. Them, I love it. I I, I just <laughs> I I genuinely believe in these players so much. Um, listen, Oli was. I mean, let's be honest. If not for first killer completely dismantling Oxygen, and that even took him seven games, that Oxygen roster should have probably made a top four, maybe a final, uh, in in Rotterdam. Um, I think he's incredible. I think he's exactly the type of player that Joyo needs with him. And I just believe in Joyo that much. Like, I watch Joyo, and I'm like, this guy is not real. You know, he's a freestyler turn pro, and he's grown so much into a full kind of well-rounded player. I think that they are, they are that good. Well, I'm, I'm really interesting, interested to see uh, Gentlemates play, Gentlemates open. I'm curious, most of all. I don't know what to expect out of them. It's going to be exciting either way. They're a great roster. They had a great team announcement, one of the best, with the the whole video in Paris. And then Solary riffing off of them was yeah. peak comedy. Um, but Juicy, Itachi, Psycho, now that's stacked. I think they can really go far with that. I uh, I don't see I how think... they are below Moist, honestly. Okay. Four four letters. Rebuttal. J O Y O. That's all you got to know, baby. <laughs> nah, nah, he gets up in the air with boost. Not with Spring Juicy, Major MVP Itachi, at sixteen. 
world champion Seiko on there. There's Nico's no way. got to show me some. I need to see a little endpoint Seiko before I can put, start putting him over Joyo. And I, I, I'm telling you, I think I think people are about to see about Rezzy, man. I, I really do. There's no way. BDS and Gentle Mates feel kind of similar to me, where it's obvious that there's great talent on those rosters. But I think we have we have learned in the past couple seasons that team composition it, it does have an impact on things. You know, we we saw Daniel be ripped off of Space Station, and everyone said, "Well, they're not even going to be top eight. And here they go; they grab the one seed last um, last spring top split for too. NA, right? And so, I think team composition is an important thing. And obviously, I haven't gotten to see much of VDS and uh, Gentle Mates, so I think the the potential is there, like the ceiling. Yeah, you know, we we know that they can be one of those teams at majors. Yeah. Just will it pan out that way? I don't know. I mean, there, there's so many question marks, too. I mean, you have Drolly, who's a brand-new player, rookie to RLCS, and, you know, something that we'll just never know about on the outside. All we see is stats. How do these players deal with adversity, right? How do these players get along in a team environment? Do they pick one another up? Does one of them sigh? Whatever else. Um, and those things, you know, silly or not, they do have an impact. What I want to say is I, and obviously I am uh, biased here with Oxygen, but I, I do think that they are being a bit overlooked. I think that roster at the end of the season last year um, has earned them this, I don't know what to call it, but this narrative, I guess, where um, they just kind of flopped at wildcard and worlds and people have held on to that, which I definitely understand. But I think when you really evaluate what we've got there, we've got Archie, who's been pretty consistent throughout last season and, and the season before was, in my opinion, probably had a better season. Um, <clears throat> then we have Ixo that we added there at the end and, and, I would say that Ixo and his team overperformed with Quadrant, right? And there was not many people that were giving them a chance for, for making the major, and they, they, did what, uh, they did what they could to get there. And so we have those two. We have Jorias, who is obviously an incredible talent, 1v1, uh, master. You, you mean you know, master. And we, But oh, we replaced him with Oski. And so I think, like, right, bare yeah. minimum, that's a lateral movement, and I think it's, it's an upgrade. upgrade. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that team is just being a little bit underrated. And I do think that part of it comes from almost like frustration. Because there have been so many people that talk about, why did Oski go to Oxygen? Why didn't he go to a BDS? Why didn't he go to Moist? Why didn't he do this or that? And I, I get that as well. So I, I, like, I see where these narratives churn up, but I do think they're being underrated. We saw in this past Oxygen tournament, and listen, take it with a grain of salt. It's an off-season tournament. It's not a big deal. But they ran through Space Station. They ran through OG. They ran through TSM. And then they yeah. ran through G2 in a reverse sweep best of seven. They I mean, showed NA that isn't is... Bad. That's right. They, 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 they showed that they've got some real stuff here. Now, yeah. that is in A, and we know that Europe is a different beast, and there's Not two free. top dogs up there. But I, I do, I think at the very least, they're being a little bit underrated. I think they are going to surprise some people, and I'm excited to see them perform. As far as the two teams, because are we all in agreement? It's Casey Vitality probably going to be yeah. two of the four. Yeah, they're yeah. going to be at the yeah. major. So as far yeah. as the two teams that make it, I actually feel, and, and I just kind of alluded to it, but I feel the most confidence in Moise and Oxygen. I just, I know yeah. that those other teams have a, a, an incredible amount of talent, but I want to see They're it first all... before I can really buy in. I think that's where well, my mind's at. You mentioned the Q and A video from uh, Wrestles and apparently Jack earlier. Yeah. And one of the questions was, who's the best English player outside of apparently Jack? He couldn't name himself. Yeah. Um, and apparently Jack said Joyo, but then he was reminded that Os Oski exists, and he yeah. was like, no, no, Oski, Oski is the best yeah. player. So for them, it's clear for the the pros, Oski is the best English player, and on a on a fully English team. Okay, Oski Polish, but also English. Yeah. Um. That that's that's definitely definitely a strong team there. But I still don't have them over BDS and Gentlemates. Sure. I I can't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it is like I I agree with you, Hootie. I think uh, if I had to pick four teams, it would be Carmi and Vitality. Uh, oxygen and moist for my majors, but then I start thinking about it. I'm like, that's like not a lot of French people, no, so no, that no. just doesn't feel right <laughs> off the, the top. Four, the top four is Vitality and KC, and then BDS and Gentlemen. I I'm gonna be honest with you, BDS, I could leave them. I I I feel better about Gentlemen. I was not left with confidence in a non super team Monkey Moon after last year. He. You know, I know Extra is is probably his best days are behind him, but um, I mean, listen, he Monkey Moon is a player who thrives with player with great with great talent around him. He's you know 
an all-time great, in my opinion, the best, the best, not the greatest, best player to ever play Rocket League professionally. Um, but I just, I'm also not a huge exotic guy. I, I, I it's just not a, it's not three players that I'm. Why I'm not, are you not I'm not exotic? <laughs> Sorry. Why are you underrating exotic? I'm not underrating him. He's been I surrounded just, by greatness. Uh, it's it's one of those things that happens, whether you like think about it consciously or not. But like when you're when when, when you're on a team you, with other, I think it's like it's similar to what Exo gets um, with yeah. this roster. Like you just have two powerhouses on your team, and it's so easy to underrate that guy um, that is kind of doing the dirty work. You know, similar yeah. to Nolly on Gen G, where you just see incredible stats from Atira. He's popping off. He's got this big loud brand as well. He streams present. Where exotics maybe a little bit more reserved, doesn't do all the. Stuff. I think sometimes those players do get underrated, unfairly. I want to say, yeah. But I think I think you're. I, I I like where you're headed with this, and it's mostly just, it's just hesitation. Like I'm just not sure yet. And maybe right, this first right. event they absolutely pop, and then I'm like, okay, yeah, I am sure they're 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 ballers. But I want to see it first, especially yeah. because gentlemates got swept in quals. Yeah, no, no. Gentlemates, I'm not so sure about. I, I'm curious to see what they can do. I think it's exciting, yeah. and I, I have them in my top four, but they could easily fall flat. Sure. But yeah. BDS, I, I think, you feel good. are a more stable team in that regard. Yeah. I yeah, want to uh, I want to clarify. I don't think Exotic is bad or even just yeah, good. He's a major winner. He's a, well, made top three twice. He's clearly a fantastic player. I just think what I think of the... If you took the 12 um, top European players last year, Mm -hmm. uh, for on those four teams, I think you take minimum nine over Exotic, um, Rise, right. Monkey Moon, Seiko, uh, Zen, and you take Alpha, and you yep. take Fatira, and you take Itachi, and you take Oski, and you take Atal. Sure. And then the last, so I just mean in terms of he's not, he doesn't, he may not stack up to the elite of the elite. That's what I mean by I'm not a yeah. big guy. I don't want to be rude to the guy. He's oh, clearly. But he doesn't have to be um, because he has Monkey Moon on his team. Fair. But Monkey Moon has needed those guys before. Is my is my point. He didn't when they had ex when at the beginning of last season, um, they faced some struggles early and it felt like they couldn't get out of that rut. And I do worry for BDS is if they once again come out kind of slow, they won't be able to recover. Now, I mentioned this before off off King. I don't think Monkey Moon's gonna be playing for BDS by the end of the year. I think he's gonna be on another team that is <laughs> yellow and black, uh, due to the team Carmine Corp being so talented. But that hasn't happened. That most likely will not happen, uh, since I'm sure BDS will do everything they can to keep him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I see Moist as a team that makes more sense. I see Oxygen as a team that makes more sense. And I see, I would, I would a hundred percent slot Gentlemates. I think that's get a real, a real possibility and a probability, but BDS, it's just, I want, I mean, I know I just said flip and spin doesn't matter, but I, they just didn't look that great at flip and spin. I knew they were new and they didn't do great in quals. And I just, it's like, I look at them and I'm like, Hey, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just, done. it's just a question mark. That's all yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's not that they exactly. can't do it. It's just a hundred percent. They have the ability. <clears throat> One thing's for sure. It's definitely going to be a, a fight. And here's the thing. We've only mentioned top six. Like we have yeah. Nifico, right? We've got, uh, I think, dude. Okay. Redemption has looked, resolve. We, they've looked shaky, points. but dude, like Cash and Astral, that is a dangerous uh, duo there. Yeah, I mean, you named sure, off yeah. a couple more Resolve. I think Endpoint could be a, a solid roster as well. I mm -hmm. mean, you you when you are in a region where you have top Cougars, Wave, um, Acro, and Toxic, they can't even make top sixteen. Yeah, yeah, like it is going to be competitive. Yeah. Speaking of uh, teams that didn't make it. Solary. Yeah. I was just Where thinking are they at? Them. We got K-Dop, yeah. Chassette, Reese Fox. Unfortunately, I'm, what was it? Top 48, I think, they got knocked out. I'm, a, I'm yeah. a big fan of those players because they're a little bit older. I'm a little bit older. <laughs> uh, I can relate a little bit more to them. Yeah. Um, but it's good to see them pick up a rookie like Reese mm -hmm. Fox. Uh, he's from Belgium as well. I live in Belgium, so I have to support this team. You got to. Uh, I mean, they have the cleanest decals, always. The branding is peak. So I'm a big solary believer, but I can't, I can't do it with with this kind of competitive results. Uh, they're just not so. there. Yeah. Um, listen, Kdop is the greatest Rocket League player of all time. <laughs> I really don't care that Turbo Pulse has one more than him. Three, uh, three world championships, and more importantly, has essentially been the inspiration point for this yeah. incredible generation of french players the i will never disrespect that man uh he's done so much for the game 
he's the reason that Europe is so strong right now. Um, but you know, you gotta yeah. know when it's time. That's yeah, it's the Justin of Europe. Every player will say right. K Dub is an inspiration for them. Yeah. So I think you know, I, I made it clear. Obviously, he's very talented. We've seen him in ones. He's got just unreal mechanics. Um, and he has been talented for a long time. I mean, Drolly was on the radar back when he was like 13, right? So yeah. we've and known this a long time coming, and he's probably known this a long time coming. Um, but I'm kind of in that space right now where I'm like, I want to see it. He's got incredible teammates. Monkey Moon, one of the most decorated players of all time. Exotics had a ton of success in recent years. How do they mesh is my question, and, and how do they integrate that incoming talent? I think that right there is actually one of the things that Vitality did so well. Again, big shout to Farah and, and the whole Vitality supporting staff. You know, they, they, they do so much for that team. But it, I think that is something that's a little bit overlooked at times. It's not always smooth. Right. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, a yeah. little bit. Of, uh, there's some growing pains when you integrate a new player, especially a highly mechanical player like like Drolly. So, well, what are you guys thinking? I mean, Yens, you're feeling pretty confident about BDS, right? Yeah, I think they're a stable team that can easily be in contention for that top three, top four. Yeah. Um, I think they're there. They have an incredible first round matchup, by the way. They play gentlemen's no, first round. Gentlemen. Oh, Brutal. that's gonna oh, be no. fire. Yeah. Gentlemen's losing in the quals is gonna make this bracket yeah, funky. That's oh, yeah, that's Europe. Yeah, Jeez. and and uh, we also have Endpoint and Resolve, the, the derby of uh, UK playing in the <laughs> round one. So it's gonna be a really interesting round mm. one. But yeah, Team BDS versus Gentlemen's. That's crazy. That um, but yeah, I mean, Dorali, what, what can you say? He's got such amazing teammates as mentors that I really think, maybe not right out of the gates with this Team BDS, but there's a lot of potential there to grow within the yeah. season. Um, with Cassio as a coach, he has a lot of experience getting on those land stages. Yeah. Alone at one point by himself that one time that his teammates had coped. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. When they were sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And BDS, you know, to that note of Vitality, BDS is an org that supports their team a ton as well. You know, boot camping yeah. very frequently. Yeah. So I think that's a great environment for a, a young talent to grow. Great in advantage well. for them, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, will, I mean, I, what, what I was most impressed with Drolly and his come up was his willingness to take a break. Like he was, yeah. he was in North yeah. America for a while and he was coming up at 13. And then he just kind of left for a while. Yeah. And I think that shows a lot of maturity in that he's willing to separate his life from this game and i think that matters a lot i think there are some people who they get pro really early and when they play well they're happy and when they don't play well they think that they're worthless and i think it it's an issue that a lot of young pros have and i i, I was really impressed by the maturity to just say hey look i got a couple of years before this let me go and be a kid for a while and that's a tough it's a tough decision to make but it clearly has worked out i think he's got a ton of talent i think he's the clear um He's the clear best rookie in in the RLCS this year uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. I should say. Okay. Um, sorry, I, that's that's yeah. I, I almost I almost oh, myself caught Hold again. on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Sphinx. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. in Europe for sure. He's he's yeah. the top rookie, and um, I think there's no one better to learn how to play the game of Rocket League properly than Monkey Moon. Yeah. I think if a 13 year old kids came to me and said, "Hey, I want to go pro," I'd say, "You need to watch Monkey Moon replay till your mm -hmm. eyes bleed." So mm -hmm. having that, I mean, Monkey Moon has a chance to do something he hasn't been able to do, and that's be a leader, right? This is his team. He's got a young superstar on the way, and there's been issues with his teams in the past, and it's it, it's a great chance for him to show that, hey, I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm a, I'm someone who cares about the development of of my teammates, who wants to create a great team environment, who wants to be there for them. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm really hoping he does just that. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm super stoked. I'm going to be working the auction broadcast on Friday. I'm hoping that they go a quick 3-0, and make my job nice and easy. Yeah. So I'm excited for Friday. We've got, uh, again, Lone Region EU by themselves, so you won't be having to uh, flip between different regions. You can watch, dedicate all your attention to Europe. We are going to go ahead and move forward to our next segment for the day. By the Dip is the name of it. We are going to select our... Um, undervalued pro in fantasy if you are not familiar with fantasy you can go to fanrl.com set up a fantasy team it's just a fun thing to do if you are tapped in to rl esports it's one of the fun things you can do on the side i'll go ahead and just plug here i've got a league where you can win some money if y'all want to join my league it's just called hootie's league Ooh. on fanrl.com i should actually and, join uh, your league 
you know, again, the premise here is we're trying to pick a player that for the price that they're listed at, we think they're going to overperform, all right? So this doesn't mean pick just the best player because then we just pick the most expensive. So we're just picking a player who we think is going to bring good value to your fantasy roster. Um, and if y'all want, I'll go ahead and kick us off. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So here's what I think. Um, I think Astral on Redemption at 1450 has the potential to be an incredible pick, not just a decent pick, an incredible pick. Um, we had Evo on Dig in this last weekend, um, and he was priced at 1400 and then Evo put up 700 fantasy points, and that is something that would typically get you a price of like 1750 1800 So, um, you know, just to kind of put things into perspective there, if you have not looked at and played fantasy, um, and Astral, dude, we know how insanely talented he is. He's an incredibly um, gifted player mechanically. He can make all kinds of stuff happen on both ends of the pitch. Um, you know, we've got a, a mechanic, Astral Pinch, named after him. He's just very fast, very threatening. Um, and this roster, I do think, may not have the most success. But we talked about this a little bit beforehand. Fantasy is not, it doesn't really matter all that much if you go top four or win the event. In fact, if you go 0-3, but your specific player that you select uh, kind of pops off and carries their team, that can actually be a really good thing. Because then they don't go further into the tournament and have their, you know, their point um, total decrease. So I'm going to go with Astro at 1450. Again, I think that could be a big pick. I'm hoping that he puts up somewhere between 500 to 620 points. I think right in there it's going to be a sweet spot, and I think it's uh, achievable for him. So that's he has my to pick do it on for, defense. Uh, then, probably say it again. He has to do it on defense then, probably because he's going to come up against really strong competition where it's going to be hard to score a lot of goals. I'm all right with Mechanics that. Mechanics go both uh, ways. Many times, defense yields the most yeah. points, actually, because okay, saves, saves come like that in, in, in Rocket League. So that's my pick for the week, Astral at 1450. Yeah, I'm going to go with, I mean, I, I spent uh, a considerable amount of the last segment talking up my boys on Moist, and uh, I am going to go with Rezzy at only $1,500, just a bit more than Astral. I think he's being undervalued because of the name value, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. He's lesser known, but... I'm looking at results, and him and Growly on Hogan Mode, the legendary Hogan Mode roster, uh, they beat some of the best teams on the planet in the last in the last split that we saw of 22-23. Uh, and I think that that success will continue with, uh, with Moist, and now that he's got a more well-rounded team, uh, a team that can make a deeper run, and he, and he has a chance to really unleash, I think, with Joyo, like I said, transitioning away from that superstar scorer role into a more well-rounded player. I think Rezzy's job there is to get buckets. And uh, I, as a fellow bucket getter, as said by my men's league basketball journey, uh, respect that, and I think he's going to kind of be the Evo of this, of this era in terms of, or sorry, of this regional. Uh, in terms of somebody who has the obvious talent, but we all kind of overlook it because of results and name value and stuff. Then he comes yeah. in, he does exactly what he always does, and everyone goes, man, this guy can really play. Um, so I'm going to take Rezzy. I believe in you, brother. Go out there and kill. And, and, and you know, I'm really close to the top of my league, so I'm going to need him to do his thing. You need him to do well. Yeah, yeah, pressure's on, but... Yeah, shout out yeah, to my team, two-piece combo with fries. Well, I picked my fancy team with five NA players because I think it's free. So <laughs> if I pick some good players, then Fake three region. points for me. Yeah. Um, but I got one EU on there, and that's a, a pocket pick. That's for 1400 Juicy mm. on Gentle Mates. I think he's undervalued because his value comes from last season uh, when he was on a completely different team where he didn't have... Uh, the chances to really get, you know, his potential out there. And now he, I think he does. I think he has the teammates with uh, Psycho and with Itachi to really get his groove on and score a lot of points for yeah. fantasy as well. So Juicy, I think, is an undervalued pick uh, for this uh, fantasy league. I like that. And I like your reasoning, too, because that, that really does have such a huge impact on things. Um, I mean, we've used e Evo, but he's just a, a, an obvious example here. Um, the reason he got put at 1,400 points as a price is looking at the past. And yeah. now he's got a, te a different team composition, which results in some different play style. And now he's put up a ton of points. So I like that call. Juicy could end up being the Evo of Regional uh, 1 for Europe. We could see Rezzy do his thing as well. Or Astro, those are going to be our uh, by-the-dip picks for this week. Y'all can get involved on fanrl.com. Check them out. 
Um, with that said, I think we're going to wrap things up with a, uh, a little fun show here. We've got some decals that we are going to put on display for you guys. The decals have been released on Tuesday the 6th. Should be, uh, you know, they should be public by the time that you are watching this video. Wednesday morning, 1 a.m. in Europe. Wednesday morning, 1 a.m. for the Europeans. Great shout there, Yens. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to highlight a couple of our favorites, and then we're going to go around and make sure that we hit on at least a couple decals from each region. So, uh, Michael, why don't you kick us off? What are some of yours that you want to highlight and, and take a look at today? Yeah, so I know I just spent 20 minutes talking about how I don't believe in BDS, but if there's one thing I do believe in, <laughs> it is whoever does their graphic, their decals, because I think of all the decals, besides the original Space Station one that I used a lot, uh, the two BDS decals that have been released have been my two most used ones. I think they right. do a fantastic job with color scheme, with integrating the logo. Um, last year's Octane, I thought, was like top three decals all time. Love yeah. that one. Um, and I think they've done it again. I love the like the sort of matte chromey finish. The gray is really nice with the um, with the little pink sort of accents. I think yeah. once again, it's a it's a it's a decal design with the pros in mind, where it's subtle, sleek look and looks really really clean because that's what pros like but it doesn't lack personality which pro a lot of pro decals do sure. um and so not not org decals like the, the pros made decals i say like the mina right, fennec right. sam fennec stuff like that um <clears throat> and so yeah I'm, I'm a huge fan of that one that won't one will be getting bought uh, i will be using that to lose games in champ three um and the other one i want to talk about the other one i'm definitely going to be getting is the furia decal Oh, mm. black and gold. Can so you nice. do worse than that? I mean, it is just, uh, I mean, it's Furia cool. as a team, mm -hmm. Furia as a team is a team that admits aura, that admits swag. Yeah. They, they're mechanical. They're fast. They yeah. want to run you off the field. And I think uh, the decal does a really good job at uh, kind of representing the identity of the team, which is you better have boost because we're coming, <laughs> right? And so I, I love I love how how sleek it is. I love how uh, kind of glitzy it is. Yeah. And I think they just did a great job with making, like I said, another one where I could see Yan rocking it. I could see Lost rocking it and, and going for big clips in games and getting up and screaming on, on land. And it just feels like it represents the identity of that Fury roster so well. So, yeah, those are my two that I, I really found to be standouts. I like that. I like that. Yens? Well, I really like the BDS one as well, the new one. I, I wasn't that much of a fan of the previous ones, uh, but this no one ball is... No knowledge. I, I know, I know. I know it's loved universally, but it's not really my style. Um, but this one is very clean. Um, and the other one, the Furious Fire. But the ones I had in mind are uh, Rule 1, because I've just been waiting for that Rule 1 decal yeah. for so long. For so long. So I'm so happy that it's finally there. And it's everything I wanted it to be. It's super simple if you think about it. But it's just their branding. And their branding just knocks it out of the park. So yeah. Yeah. it works so well on the decal. Uh, it, yeah. What else to say? It's, I, I'm going to get that the first thing. And uh, the other one I have here is... NRG, even though I don't think it's even the prettiest or the cleanest uh, of them all, it I think it's just got such an interesting story to it um, because it's based on uh, a design from uh, a jacket that NRG made together with Kappa. So they've taken this design from clothing, from a fashion design, and put it on a decal. And I think that's that's really cool what yeah. uh, what they did with that um so super cool like uh like throwback vintage right vintage. yeah it has that retro look to it so I, it's it's a bit unconventional maybe from their branding but because they've used it on on, on their fashion design before i think that's really cool yeah absolutely well i'm gonna be a little bit basic here um i gotta give a shout to g2 we saw those on the broadcast last week and they, i mean they were just loved by everyone it's kind of like this Pink and blue, smoky, or like almost like a like a paint, um, right. like a watercolor paint, maybe. I, I don't know, but it's a very very cool design. I think that's going to be bought uh, by a lot of different people. It looks, I mean, it looks super sick. Um, and then of course, oxygen decal, man, come on. I mean, we got. It's, uh, here's, it's really here's one nice. of the things I will say. I, 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 am, I am a fan. So especially the first round of those decals that we got, a lot of teams leaned into the fact that we didn't have any black and white. 
And so, so many of them were just plain black and white. <laughs> but I think now teams are starting to understand while we do appreciate the black decal, I think people, you know, we appreciate that pop of color. The gold for Furia works so well. And Oxygen has done well this time to sprinkle in, a, a, you know, a few different colors in there. We got some white, yeah. like there's some uh, gradient between like a pink purple to the green. It's a nice design. It's a nice, um, nice decal. And of course, I got to support Oxygen. You know how yeah, I Yeah, it's got the colorful, colorful ways to it. But I mm -hmm. think also what we've seen change over the years is that the regulations, this yeah. is not very well known, but I, I know that the regulations for these decals have changed a lot. At the start, um, the organizations were much more limited in what their designs could look like. They all had right. to look a certain way. They all had to have um, their logos on, on one specific spot. So they were limited a lot in what they could do with the designs and with their own branding. And now we finally have uh, the tournament organizer. I don't know if it's from uh, Sailnix or from Epic or from Last. I don't think the last one because they are only just joined. Um, but let's say it's Psyonix, they finally understood that this level of freedom can really make those decals shine. And those designers have run with it and made some really clean... I think there's hardly any misses this time. Like, we've seen in the past where it was kind of like somewhere... Meh. Uh, but yeah. this, I mean, it's just fire. Yep. Yeah. And I want to shout a couple more before we go. Obviously, we selected our favorites, but we've got uh, Limitless. The first decal for an okay. SSA organization. Great. Um, and I'm, I mean, this is pretty sick. I'm looking at the Octane version right get... now. I love when the designers use the contours of the vehicle with the design. You know what I'm talking about? It's so nice. Mm -hmm. They've got some stuff here going along the, the sides of the Octane. We got to shout Elevate. Elevate have a decal um, over there in APAC. I like that. The color scheme, uh, red, black, and white, always clean. Those work together so well. Never miss. And then for OCE, I want to shout Power. I know we talked a little bit about Pioneers as well. Super I like the, nice. The decal. Super um, nice. Super nice. Power, man, they, they've got this bright, bright yellow that kind of fades um, from a, a kind of a charcoal gray on the front to the, the that yeah. bright yellow on the back, and it works really well. So, and I think Yens is right. With the, with the designers getting a bit more freedom, we have way more, um, way more designs that are high quality, whereas in the past, I think some of these designers have been limited by um, psionics restrictions. So, shout out to all the designers yeah. that are working on these decals for the different teams around the world. people say that uh, celery is boring because it's kind of the same thing. But yeah. yeah. If it ain't broke. It's, if it ain't broke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. it's, yeah, I want to shout out. Branding. I want to shout out Luminosity real quick. I like the eye. I'm just going to say it. I know everyone doesn't like the eye. Everyone said, why did you put an eye? Well, you know what? When I'm getting, you know, what, what are the Luminosity known for? Rettles chasing you around the field. <laughs> and if I'm getting chased around by a dude with an eye on the side of his car, that's scary which could oh, yeah. help them win. So just on my, my, that's my perspective. Man, there, there are so many awesome decals. You have to go check them out in the eSports shop. Um, go give it a look. See what you like. Support your favorite teams and players. That's how we continue to grow this RLCS. Once again, check out that fanrl.com. We gave you some of the best picks that you could get this week. And that's going to conclude this week's ShiftCast. Uh, any closing thoughts, Michael or Jens? Yeah. Um, you know, I think... Uh, after the humbling experience that I had with <laughs> Gen Chi, I've decided to even double down further more okay. often because it was fun. So expect more of those black and white takes from me as we go. I know I've already had Moist clearly better than the clearly. Gentle Mates in BDS, so we'll see no how way. that plays out. But, no way. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. I see something there. I'm looking uh, forward yeah. to your glasses next episode. Michael. Yeah. I got, some, <laughs> I got some stuff in the in the tank. Don't worry Great. about it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for ShiftCast episode number two. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you next time.